Hello and welcome to more nerdy rodent geekery fun. Who needs it, eh? Well, me for starters. And what could be more fun than a one-click deep fake app like Roop? No, I, I said Roop. Never mind. As you can see, while it may not be the best quality in the world, it is just one click and instant gratification is completely essential in today's society, especially when using advanced artificial intelligences. But nerdy, I can hear you cry. I want to create my own nightmares. And so you shall, young nerdling, through the power of Anaconda and these simple steps. However, before you dive headfirst into the world of deep fakery, you may be interested to know what you're going to need in order to run this. And the answer is, pretty much any modern computer system will do Linux, Mac, or even Microsoft Windows. For this one, you don't even need a GPU, though it is best if you do have one. And I'm going to be using an NVIDIA 3090 here, thanks to TensorFlow, which just allocates everything. I have absolutely no idea what the VRAM requirements would be. Let's just say that if you get any out of memory errors, then you're likely going to need to use the CPU mode instead. In that case, just make sure you have absolutely boatloads of system RAM. I'm going to show you what worked for me on Linux or indeed Microsoft Windows with an NVIDIA GPU. If you've got an AMD card in your Linux rig, just use the AMD Rock M PyTorch install instead. Over on PyTorch.org, there is a whole installation grid as well if you need more information. As mentioned, for Python, I'm using Anaconda as it also manages my different Python environments and I do like to keep stuff organized. That's about it for requirements, so on to the installation. With your trusty Anaconda prompt open, just create a new Python 3.10 environment there. You can see the commands on the screen. Conda create, give it whatever name you want, and then activate your Conda environment. If you don't already have Git and FFmpeg installed, then now is a very good time to install those. You can just do Conda install Git FFmpeg minus C Conda hyphen forge. Next up, you'll want to download the code and a model. Once again, commands on the screen, run the Git clone and then change into your newly created directory. Next up, you'll want to download that in swapper underscore one two eight dot o n n x model from the Google Drive linked there or any of the mirrors and save it straight into that root directory. If it isn't named in swapper underscore one two eight whatever, then just rename it to that. With all those downloads completed, it's time to install all of the other packages this code needs. I used three commands here. I know it's slightly different to the documentation, but basically I installed torch first and then the requirements.txt and then also the CUDA toolkit. OK, so now you've downloaded everything that it needs, installed all the packages, you are ready to start the application. There it is, python run.py minus minus GPU. There are also a number of other options you can use, as you can see there, help and source image and all that sort of stuff. So you can use it in a CLI mode as well if you like. If you do get an error like that, could not load dynamic library and all that sort of stuff, then don't worry. You just need to add that to your LD library path. In my case, home nerdy Anaconda 3 environments group lib. That's where all the libraries are. And that's where the CUDA toolkit is installed by Anaconda. Obviously, you'd replace that with your own personal Anaconda path, as I doubt your name is nerdy. That way, when you run the command with minus minus GPU, it will just start up without giving any warnings. All right, so now for doing that face swap, it's actually three clicks, but don't worry, it's not too difficult. First of all, you can select a face. So click on that, we'll put a face in there. Then you need to select a video. Let's click on that and we'll put a video in there. 
don't worry about it being all squashed up like that. The video will come through absolutely fine. Then when you click on start, it'll say, all right, where do you want to save your output? I'm going to save my output there. That's fine. And then you can click the start button. If we have a quick look at the original video there, as you can see, just the face starts up at the top, quite windy hair going on there and sort of moves around quite a bit as well. And if we have a look at the face swapped version, we can see that we have created an absolute nightmare. Mmm, yes, it really fits the face quite well and that's, that's freaky. I enjoy it. <laughs> And there you go, that's all there is to it. One thing to note, however, is that it will extract your video as frames into the same location as your select a target video there, so do be aware of that. And one thing you may also be interested in is this nerdy rodent video.